Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our advent calendar build. Well, when we left last week's show, we had just clamped everything together and uh, that is where we left it, drying. So on this week's show, we're going to continue, but we're going to start off with the front area of the roof section. Well, the very first thing that I've done here is taken a piece of quarter inch thick MDF and cut it so that it fits down inside our space here, just like that. And it will sit flush to our other quarter inch material that make up our dividers. It's not perfect, but that's okay because it's basically just a little bit of a template. And what we need to do now, as I've traced out the peak, is we need to get some three quarter inch scrap pine. Well, for the next parts, what I've done is I have tilted my table saw blade to 10 degrees and made a pass on the table saw along the length of the three quarter inch thick pine. From there, I've straightened it back to 90 degrees and ripped that piece off. And then changed it back to 10 degrees, back to 90, and kept cutting until I got a bunch of these pieces. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but they will end up being the clapboard that goes on the front of the house at the roof section. And now all we need to do is glue our pieces to our MDF in order to make the clapboard on the front. Um, we've got the first piece here and we have it mounted so that it is one eighth of an inch hanging over the bottom edge of our MDF. So I'm just going to spread around this glue and we're just going to lay the pieces side by side and they will be with the thicker part of your pine facing down. And then we can go around and clean up the rest of our squeeze out that has come out between our slats. Well, while we're waiting for our front clapboard to dry up, I have cut the roof pieces and I made them out of three quarter inch MDF. It is three inches wide and from the tip of the angle, the peak of the roof to the bottom here is nine inches. So all I did was set my miter fence to 40 degree angle and I cut both pieces so that they will mate in the top here. And this will form the roof of our advent calendar house. Now I wanted, or I thought about putting a patterned roof on it. And I think with the clapboard here, it'll be just too much. It'll just be overwhelming. Um, so for now, I'm gonna leave it as is. I may even, once I see how it looks with the clapboard on the front, I may even uh, reduce the thickness of this MDF to possibly half inch. I'm not so sure that I like that big thick roof on there. Now just before we move on with the clapboard, I want to make the base for this. And all I've done for this is I've taken a scrap of 5 8 inch poplar and I have drawn out the base of our advent calendar on it, right there. So I've just lined this up and just to make it a little more interesting, I've given myself a three inch overhang on either side and I've just drawn this obscure shape. It's, it's, it's nothing, it, there's no square lines to it. I just want it to be a little more interesting. So what I'm going to do here for this is I'm gonna cut this out with the scroll saw and what I'm going to do is using my power carver, I'm going to trim down all of the edges to shape this base to kind of be like the ground, to be almost like snow. I don't want it to be so flat. I want to give it some dimension. And there we go, that's our base carved. Uh, it still has a lot of the carving marks in it and I'm okay with that because I think that once it's painted, it's gonna look a little more like snow. Either way, that part is done and now, because we've 
taken so much time to do the carving, our peak here is dry and we can cut it to shape. Well, on the back of the MDF that has our pine pieces, I have transferred the angles of the peak of our roof. And I'm just gonna take it over to the scroll saw and cut it out. You can do this at the table saw if you want, but from my liking, it's a little too aggressive. So I think the scroll saw will be a little more forgiving in this case. So I've cut a scrap piece of pine just as a spacer and a support for our peak of our roof. And look at that, doesn't that look great? It really does. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this in place here. And once I get it in place, I'm gonna place a square at the back of the house, just to make sure that our peaks are perfectly aligned. And once I get them where I want them, I'm going to glue this in place using that scrap piece of pine in between as the support. And we'll clamp it up and let that dry. Well, I've glued the roof together, but truth be told, I didn't like how much it overhung. And I also didn't like the thickness of it. So I cut it to a width of two and nine sixteenths, which really cut back on our overhang here in the front. And I think it suits the project a little better. I also cut it down to a half inch thickness. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a chimney for this roof. And for that, I'm going to need some MDF that is an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Well, I don't have an inch and a half by inch and a half MDF. Um, so I'm going to glue two pieces of three quarter inch thick together. It's three inches long, it's two inches wide. And what I'll do is I'll glue this together and once it's dry, I will cut it down to the dimensions that I want of one and a half by one and a half. Now, while I'm waiting for this to dry, there's other things that we can work on. And I think what I would like to do at this point in time is I would like to glue on all of our door handles. Well, for the door handles, I have these little quarter inch wooden buttons and I've made up a couple little jigs. So for the larger doors, we have a jig that will place this knob right where I want it. And for the smaller doors, the same deal. We have a little jig that we can just glue it in place, stick it right there in the corner, and the doorknobs, when it's all said and done, will all be lined up exactly where I'd like them to be. So I need to take the doors off for painting anyway. So at this point, I'm gonna completely disassemble all of the doors. It's no big deal. That's why I haven't glued in any of these pins and uh, I haven't glued the base on because we need access to the bottom for the pins. But I'm gonna remove all the doors, keeping them all aligned in where they're supposed to go so that I don't mix them up and we're gonna get all of these door handles glued in place. We're just going to let all of these doors set up and turn our attention back to our roof and our inch and a half by inch and a half MDF. Um, I've trimmed it, cut it down to size, and I have cut it to a 40 degree angle. The long side being two and three quarter inches. And eventually, this will get mounted onto our roof as our chimney. Because after all, how can Santa come into your house if you don't have a chimney? <laughs> so we're going to get that chimney on there. But for now, what we really need to do is we need to give all of our pieces a good sanding because it's time to paint. Now, I'm not going to tell you what colors to paint your house. That's up to you. What I'm going to do is the entire house itself, including the clapboard, the entire section is going to be white. My roof is going to be red. My chimney is going to be black. And I know that sounds weird, but you'll understand more after. And all of my doors will be red. As well, my snow or my land, 
or my base or whatever you want to call this, this is going to be white. Now, here's what you want to keep in mind. If we're going to be painting, eventually this has to be glued together. So I will be masking off the area where the house sits on the base so that there will be no paint here and the glue can get good adhesion. I will also be masking off the top of my house here along the MDF sides so that we can glue the roof on rather well. I will also be masking off the underside of the roof for the same reason etc 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 so any place where there's going to be glue on glue contact uh, we want to try to leave it as bare wood so we don't need a video of me spray painting that would bore you to tears so for now i'm just going to go around mask off what i have to sand what i need to and uh, essentially paint all the pieces the colors that i want and i'll see you guys when this thing is all painted up so while I'm waiting for the paint to dry on the other pieces, I want to work on the chimney. And I've painted it flat black, which doesn't really look like much of a chimney. But what I've also done is, you can't see it on camera here, I don't think the camera is showing it, but with the Cricut cutter, and if you don't know what that is or how to use it, I'll post a link to my Cricut tutorial or the introduction to the machine. But what I've done is I've cut out some shapes in red vinyl, just pull this off here, of bricks. And I want to use the black on our um, chimney here as kind of the mortar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully lay all of these bricks here. I'm starting at the bottom because I want full bricks at the bottom. Once I get to the top, if I have to trim them, the overhang of the chimney is going to cover that. But for now, I'm going to go around and basically lay all the bricks in place as if I was bricklaying and we'll get this entire chimney covered and I'll show you what I end up with when I'm finished it. Now for parts like this that overhang, I'm just going to lay it on my cutting mat here and very carefully with a sharp blade, cut that little bit of vinyl off. Just like that. And with that, that would be our chimney done. And all we need to do is take the cap and you can see where we've masked off for the wood glue as well as on the cap. And we will glue this in place just like this. And that will be our chimney. So I finished putting the chimney together with all of the vinyl as well. I glued the top section on and glued it to our roof. And this is what you end up with. Something that looks like this. Well, we're going to put this aside. The white paint is dry on our house itself. But what I've done is I've taken a piece of hardboard and I've drilled out holes, 10 of them that are equally spaced here. And I've used it as a template to drill holes all along the top of our clapboard here on our house. And what size holes are they? Well, they will be specific to what product you use for your house. But for me, they will be for these battery powered LED lights uh, that I got at a local dollar store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a glue gun. I'm going to insert the lights into all of our holes, glue them in place, and then show you what we end up with for that little decoration. Okay, so all the lights are glued in, and uh, I've also picked up at the local craft store, I got a package of these. They were these little small Christmas wreaths. I got them actually for 50% off, so cha-ching. And I've got this, and I'm just gonna hot glue this in place. But let me just show you what it is that we're looking at now. Once this roof goes on, I'm just gonna sit it in place here. It'll be clamped in a bit better than this. I've glued the controller and the switch to the back. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? That is just spectacular. 
Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now that we have our lights and I'm going to glue my wreath on there is I just want to turn my attention or your attention or somebody's attention to the base. And what I've done here is I've drilled two holes on either side. And what that will be for, you guys are going to love this. On either side of our house, there will be a tree. And I'm going to use some acrylic paints and I will put some snow on here to make it look uh, a little more Christmassy. I might even decorate it with maybe some seed beads or something to make it look like a Christmas tree. But there will be one of these trees on either side. So with that being said now, the only thing really left to do here at this point is we need to place our doors where they belong. Now I've already showed you the method of how to do that. Uh, I don't think we need another video. It's the exact same process. The only difference is, is that now they're red. So I will see you when I get all of those done. And then I think it's just a matter of applying the numbers onto our advent calendar at that point. So with all the doors attached, I have now used the Cricut cutter to cut out all the various numbers that I need for the different doors. And I'm just gonna use some black vinyl and I will place the numbers randomly across uh, our whole project. And I don't think we need a video of it. I have given a tutorial of how to do this on another show. I'll post a link to that, as I said, uh, down below. And if you guys are interested in that, you can check that out and, and learn the process of cutting out and transferring these numbers. But for now, I'm going to carry on and get all of these done. And then I'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll show you what I've got. And there you have it. A Christmas Advent calendar. Guys, I don't know how far this tradition extends. I mean, I don't know if it's done in other countries. And because of that, I realize that some of you may not know what an advent calendar is. So what this is, is each one of these compartments represents a day in the month of December. 1 through 24, with 24 being Christmas Eve. And it's basically in each one of these compartments is stored a treat of some kind, whether it be... Um, like a little candy or maybe uh, <clears throat> oh, I, a little toy or that sort of thing. Something small that a child would look forward to opening up that door on that day and taking out his one little treat or her little treat for that day. Now, it doesn't have to be candy or, or toys. It could be coupons, say, um, where, you know, learn a new skill today and you could plan a day with them in the shop to, to maybe learn scrolling, let's say, for instance. So there's other ideas that you can do other than sweets and chocolates or small toys, such as what if you wanted to make this for your pet? Each one of the day could have a little biscuit or a new dog tag or something. I know how much people love their pets, so this project is completely modifiable for that. However, <laughs> the, uh, the excitement of it kind of lies uh, on, on the owner in this case and not necessarily the pet, as the pet doesn't understand the concept of days 1 through 24 and then Christmas. <laughs> so <laughs> it's up to you how you want to do it. Guys, this can create a lot of traditions, and I'm hoping that over the years, the grandchildren are going to look forward to coming over to Grandma and Pop's house and opening up a door uh, whenever they get there. I get the feeling it's going to be a, a, a race to see who gets to the candy or to the, to the toy or what have you first, and I think we're going to have to have some extras stocked up so that we can restock it for when the next child comes along to check the doors. Guys, there's a lot of modification that can be done on this project. Um, I added the paint to the trees and um, I haven't decorated them just because I haven't really come up with how to decorate them yet. Um, but it's completely doable. Uh, I put that little snowman on the yard and you know what, the vinyl. The vinyl makes a huge difference here in the project as far as professionalism goes. But if you don't have the vinyl, you can stencil on numbers using paint. The same thing goes with the chimney bricks. 
It doesn't have to be vinyl. I just do that because I have the access to my wife's machine and therefore it makes it a little nicer for me. But basically modify this project how you wish, make it your own and start your own Christmas traditions this way. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing the channel. And you know what, click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. There's a lot to offer. There's a lot to be had on this show. Um, honestly, as I said, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're gonna try this yourself for your holiday celebrations. And guys, more importantly, I hope you're gonna join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.